Let us remove all hatred and prejudice from this world and let it begin with me. We were told to leave everything behind because they were taking us to Hungary to a labor camp. The guard who told us clearly that if we tried to escape, he would shoot. As we were holding on to mother for dear life, a Nazi was running, yelling in German, twins, twins, twilling it, twilling it. And my mother asked hesitantly, is that good? And the Nazi said, yes. And my mother said, yes. At that moment, another Nazi came, pulled my mother to the right. We were pulled to the left. We were crying, she was crying. And all I really remember is seeing my mother's arms stretched out in despair as she was pulled away. When I was between life and death and Mengele stood by my bed and said that I had only two weeks to live. And I crawled on that barrack floor to reach the other end of the barrack because this barrack was not even allocated water. So if, as I was crawling, I would fade in and out of consciousness. And I kept telling myself, even in a semi-conscious state of mind, that I must survive. I must survive. So if I have a difficulty in life now, it always throws me back to the barrack floor. If I could survive those two weeks, I can survive anything. My sister died in, on June 6, 1993. It was a very difficult probably the second most difficult experience in my life. So two years later, I decided to open the museum where she would be everywhere. And this way, my nightmares stopped. And uh, we have been now open over 20 years. In 1960, I met a tourist from Terre Haute, Indiana, who is also a survivor of an other camp, and he was liberated by Lieutenant Colonel Andrew Neff from Terre Haute, Indiana. And he said to Lieutenant uh, Colonel Andrew Neff, I like you Americans. I want to go to America. Will you help me go to America? And they did. So he never wanted to live anywhere else but in Terre Haute, Indiana. So when I met and married him in Tel Aviv, I came from Tel Aviv to Terre Haute. It's quite a jump.